For a while now, I've been trying to find a handheld gaming console that was powerful enough to play the generation of games I'd like to play, was open enough that I could run whatever, you know, software I wanted on it, uh, and also had all the buttons and joysticks in the right places. I haven't been able to find that quite yet, so I thought it would be fun to try and build my own using a Raspberry Pi 4. My name is Luke, I'm an embedded software designer by day, and we are at Computer Club. So yeah, I want to try to build my own, so I had to put together some requirements. Requirement one, open source and reproducible. I'm not going to try to sell this thing, uh, but in case it turns out okay, I want others to be able to reproduce it if they want to. So I'm going to try to use all off-the-shelf parts or parts that are easily salvageable from e-waste or other devices. Two, faster than a Pi Zero. There's a lot of great projects out there that use the Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, and I have nothing against those. I just want to try to use something more powerful and, you know, do something different. Three, doesn't cost too much. You know, spending $1,000 to play Super Nintendo games just doesn't seem prudent. Four, modern control layout. Presently, I don't think any of the SBCs that I could use uh, you know, could do anything more than like N64 or PS1, so I probably won't need dual analog sticks, but I just kind of prefer it. And, you know, there's experimental support for 64-bit kernels and Vulkan on the Raspberry Pi 4, so it's not ridiculous to think that someday we might get GameCube out of one of these Pies. Five, large screen. I don't want to squint too much. Uh, most of the screens that are readily available right now are 16 by 9. Even though I know most of the old games that it will be able to run are 4.3, uh, which isn't perfect, but um, you know, I'll try to learn how to do those bezels on the side, or just leave it black. I don't know. Six, battery powered. It doesn't have to last all day or anything, but you know, it would be cool if I could get maybe three hours out of it. So with those requirements in mind, let's go over the uh, components that I actually selected. Single board computer. Uh, it was in the title of the video, so it will be no surprise that I chose the Pi 4. I looked at other things like using an Intel compute stick or that new thing, the Chewy Lark Box. That one, I saw a disassembly and it could actually kind of fold around, but anyways, Finding 12 volt power might be more difficult. I also looked at doing a NVIDIA Shield TV. When those get decased, they're pretty small too. In the end, I went with the Pi 4 because nothing can compete in terms of community support, which is going to be a huge deal finding, you know, drivers and modules for everything. The one downside of the Pi 4 is heat. Uh, which brings me to my next set of components. I am going to use a Nintendo Switch heatsink and fan, cooling fan. So, you know, the Switch, the CPU probably gets pretty hot and it's nice and low profile. So, uh, this should theoretically work. It's the one thing I have not really tested, so this is kind of the biggest question mark. But uh, my plan is to 3D print a little bracket and do some testing soon. For a display, I chose the WaveShare 5-inch LCD H. It's the H model? Yeah. I, I was interested in, there's a 5.5-inch OLED version with a 1080p screen, but it was just so expensive. This thing was like a half or third of the price or whatever. The downside is the screen is just okay. The, it's not an IPS display, so the viewing angles are not that great. But, you know, it'll be fine for this project. I can reuse it for other stuff too, so that's fine. For sound, uh, this uh, 
WaveShare board has an onboard amplifier. So I've just got some uh, little old laptop speakers from an old laptop a friend gave me to e-waste. So I salvaged those. We'll see how they turn out. Uh, otherwise, I could try using Bluetooth earbuds or I could try to run out a headphone jack depending on how much space there ends up being. For controls, I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, I wish there were some like open source PCBs that were like Joy-Cons that you could reuse. And I was like, oh yeah, I could just use, just use Joy-Cons. Uh, so there, the D-pad kind of sucks and Bluetooth will add some lag, but they are a finished, you know, the hardware is done. I found software that will let you tie them together as one uh, controller. So it just was the easiest solution. Oh yeah, and I also got this charging grip off AliExpress, and I'm gonna see if I can pull out the, um, and reuse the contacts for charging the Joy-Cons. Power supply and batteries. I am gonna use Helder Game Tech's new Retro PSU. Uh, this guy goes by Angry Helder. He's a very active community member in a lot of like retro gaming handheld stuff like the Minty Pie. He's designed a power supply that can, can put out enough current for a Pi 4 and a screen. So it isn't for sale at the time of filming, but he responded to a question of mine on YouTube and it should be out relatively soon. Oh yeah, and batteries. I salvaged some 18650 batteries out of the same laptop I pulled the screen out of. Uh, you know, I guess it's not super safe to reuse old batteries, so I'll try it out, see if they get hot. And to put it all together, I'm gonna need to design an enclosure. I don't have a ton of experience with 3D CAD, but I've been watching some tutorials, and uh, so it's not overwhelming. I'm gonna try to do some smaller projects in steps. Like first, I'm gonna try to do the bracket for the heatsink and the fan, and then maybe try to do like a bezel around the screen that I could slide a Joy-Con into, stuff like that. And then my friend Brendan has a 3D printer, so I'll try to get him to print this stuff for me. Okay, so to put this all together, I got some ribbon cable and connectors to make a little HDMI cable. Uh, although I wish I got this one at an angle too because it sticks out pretty far. And the heat sink, obviously not designed for this, so I'm uh, just gotta figure out like what angle to go. Um, I'm gonna have to desolder some of the larger parts probably, and maybe even this whole row of uh, pins to do something like that, and then put a little screen on there. Put this guy on there, bingo bango. Crocodile done deal. So at the end of it, I'll basically end up with like a Nintendo Switch, but with worse performance, uh, worse battery life, and probably bad build quality. Um, and there's a pretty good chance it'll end up costing more than a Switch Lite, but that's not the point. Making it is the fun part. So I hope you'll join us in uh, subsequent videos uh, here at Computer Club. Thanks.